Okay, now let's talk about, yeah, we've done some mathematics, but let's talk about how does that impact the, the nucleus-electron interaction. Am I okay to erase this junk? So one of the flaws with the Bohr model of the atom is, is one, the electron can't stay in that orbit. It violates the uncertainty principle. It would just shoot really, really fast to the point where it could just escape. Now, the other problem is, is the electron and the nucleus would be attracted and they'd spiral into one another. But even still, what's the current model of the atom look like? The modern model of the atom. You have a nucleus, right? Where are the electrons? Yeah. It's like this nebulous looking thing. We say there's a probability of finding it within this region. But the electron is still, what's its charge? Negative one, and what's the proton for a hydrogen atom, what's its charge? Positive one, nucleus, I should have said. So the question still remains, why doesn't the electron just go boop right to there, right? Coulombic attraction. It makes total sense. We're going to use the uncertainty relationship to explain why that doesn't happen. So big question. Why doesn't the electron spiral into the nucleus. Okay. To look at this, we're going to go to an isolated system. Total energy. Isolated atom. First law of thermodynamics. What does the term isolated system mean? Mm -hmm. Exchange of what? No exchange of energy. What else? Yep, well, that's, that's roped into energy. Yep, definitely energy. One other one. Mass. So can't have those two exchanges. So the total energy of the system, what's got to be conserved? Yeah, mass and energy. We only care about energy right now, so the isolated, isolated atom is constant. It can't pick up or steal energy from other spots. Okay. Uh, and we can make that happen pretty easily. The atomic scale, if you just have a single hydrogen by itself, that's not really tough to do. You, we do that a lot, actually. Okay. Let's consider the uncertainty relationship again. It's delta what? Yep, times is greater than or equal to what? Okay. So let's consider an electron, and it's traveling in a path towards the nucleus. So as the electron moves towards the nucleus. Let's consider the change in position and the, excuse me, the uncertainty in position and the uncertainty in momentum. So we said there's an electron cloud around this atom, right? So out here, how big is the electron cloud? Let's assume a spherical distribution. 
like that. If I move closer, let's say it's still following those circular orbits. And I'm still following sort of circular orbits, we get even closer. What's happening to the position or the uncertainty in position? It's decreasing. There are less spots it could possibly be in, right? As we keep getting closer and closer to the nucleus, there's just significantly less space it could be around. So what's happening to uncertainty in position? Okay. Given our uncertainty relationship, what must happen in position or uncertainty in position? Yeah. So uncertainty in position must increase. Okay. So what does that mean about the velocity and the momentum? Because remember, that's true, right? So it's related to the speed of the electron. What happens to the speed of the electron? It increases. It goes fast enough to escape that potential energy pull. So even if it should happen to appear really close to the nucleus, what happens is, is its speed is too wild to pull it back in. Even the nucleus doesn't know where the electron is. The uncertainty in that position starts to shoot way up, or excuse me, that momentum starts to shoot way up. And even something as small as a nucleus, in comparison to how small this guy is, it can't, it can't keep track of it. So as the electron approaches the nucleus, the electron becomes more combined. And the momentum has to compensate, must speed up due to the uncertainty principle. Isn't that just weird? <laughs> like even nature, like you would think nature has this like clockwork and figure everything out and everything is going by it. It even has to follow this relationship. What's going on there? That's like a big question in physics right now. People think sometimes that quantum mechanics is incomplete or that, that we we don't know everything about physics, which is true. And is this idea here, is this inherent, or are we just doing a bad job at describing what we're doing? We don't really know that yet. But every time we try to break this thing, it doesn't break. And they've spent a lot of money trying to do that. I think it's really cool. All right, that's the weird trippiness stuff that we're going to talk about for the day. Um, next time, we're going to talk about uh, bras and cats. That should be fun. Hopefully everything didn't break in your bag.
We'll talk about the postulates of quantum mechanics, so next class really won't be a super mathematical. And then um, you guys have a Quizlet next week. <laughs>